sorry to call. Um, welcome. My name is David Richards. I'm the inspector on the appointment to uh, hold the inquiry um, to uh, make recommendations to the state on uh, the Cool. If I could just explain uh, a bit about today, this is an opportunity for people who have made representations or who said that they want to make representations about the proposal. Um, so I'll call speakers one after the other. Uh, I don't want to restrict in any way what people have to say, provided they're relevant to the planning issues that are before the inquiry. What I would just say is we have had a number of um, uh, people who've spoken already, uh, and we've had a number of witnesses on behalf of the Green, green Air Group who've spoken very eloquently about residents' concerns. So some of these, uh, and I've, I've read a lot of uh, representations, so some of these are in my mind. Um, I don't want to speak what you have to say, but uh, if there are certain themes that become uh, regularly uh, referred to, I just point out there's no need to repeat. If you agree with what somebody else has said, um, then you may want to associate them to yourself with what they've said, or with the witnesses that uh, we've heard on behalf of the three screen air group. So uh, I won't speak to the restrictions that we have today. Um, can I just introduce uh, Mr. Goatley, who is representing the appellants this afternoon. Uh, it's possible that he may want to put questions to you. I'll certainly offer him the opportunity. It's possible that he may not. Um, if you're prepared to answer these questions, I can give more weight to what you say. But um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Also, um, in the room, we have Mr. Fraser, who's representing Stratford Borough Council. I don't think he'll be wanting to ask any questions because uh, the Borough Council and most of the residents are. Um, and also, there were representatives of the Green Clean Air Group on the right hand side. <coughs> uh, what I'd ask you to do, uh, you can speak from where you are if you want to, but I think it's preferable if you can come forward and use the microphone. If anybody doesn't want to do that, as uh, so long as we can hear you, it's fine if you speak from where you are. Um, so, can I first ask, on, well, actually on my timetable, I've got capital. Councillor Andrew West. <coughs> also, could I say it would be extremely helpful for, for me if you can leave a copy of what you said if you've got it in written form. Um, if you can, if you can uh, leave it with uh, Natalie at the back of the room, it would be extremely helpful. She'll ensure that it's copied to all of us, but it will be very helpful to me if I can. So, Councillor Weston, welcome to the inquiry. Thank you. Um, and can I take the opportunity to thank you for allowing me to speak this afternoon also. Um, I felt it was imperative that I did so, given the unprecedented <coughs> level of public feeling on this issue expressed by thousands of Trafford residents. I should begin by providing a little background. I was first elected to Trafford Council in May 2011 and represent the Priory Ward, which covers Sale Town Centre and as such is several miles east, southeast of the proposed plant. In spite of this, I have been contacted by dozens of my own constituents who have expressed significant concern about the proposals and cited <coughs> serious worries about the impact that such a plant could have on the health of Trafford residents. In addition, many sale residents and those from other parts of Trafford and into Salford and Manchester itself have signed a brief Clean Air Group's petition to show their concern at this proposal. Placing this into context and setting aside the several hundreds of additional emails that I've had specifically from residents in the Ernston and David Hume area, I have received more representations on this issue from my constituents than I have on every other issue combined since I was first elected. You will not be surprised to hear that all of the correspondence follows a general trend. Each and every resident who has contacted me has expressed grave concerns about the threat to public health that could arise if the plans go ahead. They tell me that the science is unproven and that to pursue this project in what is a highly built up area is taking risks with people's lives. I cannot say I am surprised that residents are worried in this way. I share their concern when I learn that there have been more than 75 fires or explosions at biomass plants since 2008 and I can also understand why they are horrified to hear 
that contaminated wood may be burned to contain lethal substances such as arsenic. I am not a scientist and cannot pretend that I would be able to mount, to mount a compelling scientific argument. I cannot say with absolute certainty whether this plant is safe or not, and it is apparent to me, having attempted to digest the various scientific arguments of both parties, that neither can make a definitive case either way. But it is my clear view that residents are genuinely fearful of the threat to health that accompanies this application. It is also my understanding that the perceived threat to public health is a justifiable reason for refusal of planning permission. The people of Trafford have spoken, and it is undeniable that there is a perceived threat to public health here. I would just say this, any risk to public health, no matter how large or small, significant or insignificant, as some have said that this may be, is a risk too far, and I therefore fully support the decision of the Planning Committee to refuse this application. Turning away from the very definitive and definite perceived threat to public health that is apparent with this application, I'd just like to make some more general points that concern me from the reading and work that I've undertaken to inform my views in order to respond to the representations that I've received. Principal amongst these is concern with regard to the location selected by the developers for the proposed plant. David Hume is a very densely populated area, meaning that if there is any health threat, the number of people affected would be particularly high. Not only this, but residents in this part of the borough already have to tolerate poorer air quality than elsewhere due to local sewage works and significant pollution from traffic from the nearby M60 motorway and traffic travelling to the traffic centre. Most damning of all my concerns around the location, however, is the impact that this has had on the proposed chimney stack height. This is just half the size of a similar biomass chimney stack owned by the applicants at Ernie's Marshes and means that any emissions will be dispersed over a much smaller area than is ideal. It appears to me that this means that Erdson and David Hume residents and others in the locality will be breathing in a higher concentration of any potential emissions and again I would submit that this presents a risk to public health in the area. It is not lost on me that the reason for the reduced stack height is that the Barton Airfield flying zone is directly above the proposed plant something which the applicants should have been fully aware of, given that they own the airfield in question. Finally, on the subject of the planning process and the decision to appeal Traffic Council Planning Committee's initial decision, I find it extremely disappointing that this has happened, given not only the huge weight of public opinion, but also the total opposition from local councillors of all parties in Trafford. We speak as one voice on this issue, and I was proud that the Planning Committee rejected this application unanimously on the ground of perceived threat to health and chimney stack height. I hope that these legitimate concerns will be recognised as part of this inquiry and that the original decision of the Planning Committee will be upheld. Thank you very much. Okay. Some of whom have illnesses and infirmities, 
and who live, work, and contribute to the same area which will be directly affected by the proposed plan to burn toxic materials. I have taken time to consult those for whom I carry responsibility to understand their perceptions in relation to, to Bren. Many of those I have consulted consider this public inquiry to be an intimidating and frightening environment. They do, however, want their voice to be heard and for their concerns to be given proper consideration and weight as evidence in this public inquiry, which is why I am making this submission. Any fears that they may have in relation to this public inquiry pale into insignificance when compared to their fears about this proposed plant. The overwhelming perception is that this plant has not been properly planned to minimise risk to life, health and well-being in the community, evidenced by the dangerously low stack height and the known risks of dioxin over the long term. The overwhelming perception is that this plant has not been properly planned using the correct data or latest evidence which raises serious questions about its viability with insufficient levels of reclaimed landfill wood available and its environmental impact even when compared to burning coal as has been evidenced in the last few days. The <coughs> overwhelming perception is that Peel Energy are being far from open and transparent in their planning application using selective data and providing plans for public view without numbers or scaling. The overwhelming perception is that highly trained and skilled QCs can argue within narrow technical points of law that will affect their entire future life without consideration for what life will actually be like for people in this community. The overwhelming perception is that Peel Energy simply does not care about people and are solely interested in profit. The overwhelming perception is that Peel is dishonest, has broken promises in the past, and will do the same again. The overwhelming and perception... I need to be careful about making allegations that may not be capable of substantiation. I, I, I can assure you that all I'm reporting is perception. I, I, I fully accept the fact that <coughs> some of this may be absolutely unsubstantiated. I'm just I'm sharing sure well. As a reference community representative, I'm sharing views, but I take your guidance in space. Of it's perception. Okay. It's perception. Okay. Let's take your point. Perception runs a lot of ways. Seeing what can happen in perception on the internet frequently. If people can perceive things and decide to say things, um, that doesn't mean that perhaps one needs to exercise true moderation. Yeah, I, I, as I said, um, I would be very uh, pleased if you can find comments to, to plan issues. But um, my understanding, my understanding was is that the perception of risk was one of the considerations. Perception of risk is certainly one. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I think so comments on, on on fear as an operator, I think, are, you need to be very careful. I fully take your point. I'm, I'm more than willing to withdraw that. I simply um, was wanting to report the fact that. People People's perception of risk um, cannot be separated from the operator, but I fully accept that that might be a step too far. And having simply reported that, I'm more than happy to withdraw that. The people I have spoken with are not against economic development. Neither are they unrealistic about the future energy needs of our community and the wider society. Indeed, as employers and employees in the local economy, they are passionately interested and concerned with economic growth of the area. They simply do not believe the argument that this proposed solution provides a suitable contribution to economic development and cannot understand why their health must be put at risk for the sake of a very unsatisfactory way of dealing with waste and producing energy, even if the cost of energy would need to be higher as a result of more sustainable and environmentally responsible ways of producing energy. Laws exist because people and corporations will otherwise act in ways that can and will be harmful to life and the stability of our society. When laws are manipulated and used in order to push through agendas, we all end up worse off. The perception of those for whom I carry responsibility is that right now the law is not there to protect them, but is a system that can be manipulated at their expense. The overwhelming perception is that there is sufficient risk associated with burning toxic material in a residential area that it should be avoided at all costs, not that the risks should be diminished and played down in an exercise of abstraction. Air 
is no respecter of geographical boundaries, and the full risk simply cannot be understood. And the overwhelming perception is one of amazement and puzzlement that this is a serious proposal. People are afraid, and they have not seen or heard anything to allay their fears. Quite the contrary, the more they educate themselves as to the evidence, the more afraid they become. I make this submission in the hope that common sense and the hopes and fears of real people living real lives will be given the right and proper weight, and that this appeal will be flatly rejected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, I'll go back to my uh, list order again, and then there is Christine McLaughlin. Okay, if there are no 
as well, finding the atmosphere too intimidating. Um, <coughs> it's not so to me. It's supposed to be an opportunity to say what you need to say without the fear. So, calling Hill. I wish to thank this inquiry for giving me the opportunity to voice my concerns regarding the construction and running of the Barton Renewable Energy Plant. Being a resident of Baby Hume and living within a mile of the proposed site, both myself and my family will be directly affected should this application be granted. This plant fails the residents, businesses, visitors and environment of the area on many levels. First of all, I must say that I'm totally unable to reconcile as to why this issue has, in fact, reached this stage, purely on a common sense level. Trying not to be naive, I know only too well that in the world of business, common sense rarely gets a looking. I was astounded to find out that the Environment Agency had recently granted Peel Energy a permit. Forgive me for questioning this action. Only I did think that this agency was in place to protect the environment. <laughs> After attending the inquiry from its first day, evidence came out which puts a heavily loaded question mark over its fit for purpose. I would go further in as much as to say that I personally have no confidence whatever in anything that this agency reports on or resources. And I believe all other agencies, departments and governing bodies which have been involved with it have been negligent regarding the duty of care concerning the general public, which fills me full of dismay and despair, and I feel that we have been so down the river. I have attended many meetings and read much of what is in the public domain on the subject of biomass incineration. The conclusion I have reached is similar to my belief as a nuclear industry. I believe not enough research has been done to allay my fears. I hold the delicate balance of our wonderful environment as a paramount issue, and I am passionate about my interference which may break its chain. Mankind over many years has done much to affect it, introducing such dangerous pollutants in many and very varied forms, thus bringing about a breakdown of personal good health. I have taken my responsibility seriously enough to ensure that my family have had the best of care, prevention being better than cure. And working as a complementary therapist, now retired, I have abhorred interference of toxins, not only in our food chain, but to the chemical intervention in our water supply. Now more than ever before, epic pollution in our air. We are being bombarded by chemicals from every direction, and I feel very strongly that it is against my human rights not to be able to breathe clean air. No wonder we are being faced with such increases in fatal diseases never before being experienced, and especially concerning our young children. Our bodies are unable to cope with these unacceptable levels of pollution now. Having heard the truly alarming levels of pollution around Liverpool Road Eccles taking place as we speak, adding a biomass incinerator has got to be the last straw. Within the past few months, two of my close neighbours have passed away, in fact one this week, due to heart-related conditions. A young mother of two living across the road with cancer. A friend similarly diagnosed and my husband's breathing difficulties worsening. All these instances are probably linked to the already alarming levels of pollution in which we live. We are told that this incinerator will be burning wood, both virgin and landfill, 
and it has been mentioned that these commodities cannot be sustained by virtue of the UK alone. The possible importing of woods will un undoubtedly open a very large can of worms. I cannot but fear that this may, may possibly just be the thin end of the wedge. Further down the line, all rubbish from landfill sites could end up passing through the portals of such incinerators. As the government is anxious to build on as much land as they can get their hands on, vacant, previously used landfill sites, in their eyes, would be a distinct possibility. It would be the green light to burn anything at all. Even now it has been muted that certain amounts or types of sewage is planned to be burned already. Not only would this plant, if built, emit extremely dangerous and life-threatening toxins, the knock-on effect regarding increased traffic would create prolific and continuous heavy goods vehicles delivering all waste materials needed to run the incinerator. Plus the taking away of toxic ash, where increasing evidence shows that a significant portion of incinerator bottom ash should now be re regulated as hazardous waste due to the high levels of lead and zinc compounds it contains. To be disposed of who knows where. Using all an already very heavily congested M60 motorway, the area, area around Junction 10 of the M60 is a lot of the time gridlocked and at a standstill. I couldn't help but pick up on the many mentions of the general public's anxiety to this proposed biomass incinerator and its catastrophic health issues. Yes, we should be anxious by this proposal from Peel Energy. There is so much at stake here which threatens our personal health for generations to come, our communities and our very future. This plant is not needed and would be in the wrong place together with it being an unacceptably wrong design. If this facility is allowed to be built, it would be a ticking time bomb with regard to all who live, work and visit the area for at least the next 25 years. And I know I should not get emotional and passionate when addressing this inquiry. But this is not just a profit-making business venture to me. I am merely trying to protect myself and my family's way of life. And I believe wholeheartedly that our health would be very much at stake together with the future of the area as we know it. I implore you to reject this application forthwith. Not to do so will be signing our death warrants, not only as individuals, but as a community too. And I deeply resent the sweetening pill announced on Tuesday on behalf of Peel by the IQC. Apparently, the company offering money to go towards local infrastructure. Would it, would it be more fitting to offer to help out the funeral costs? <laughs> <laughs> This to me is pointless. 
as they both appear to agree that air pollution from this plant and vehicle delivery and taking away of toxic cash will be by their nature will quite be by their nature reduced air quality in the area. An area that continues in its failings to comply with European requirements and standards. Any toxins taken into the human body over a period of time will cause harm. You only have to look at, at smoking cigarettes and their detrimental effects as an example. No one can honestly argue about the harm they cause. So from my perspective and my health issues, I don't perceive that air pollution and the increase, no matter how large or otherwise, from this proposal will affect my health. I know it will. Where this plant is proposed to be built is adjacent to the M60 motorway at Junction 10. This junction gives access to Trafford Park and the Trafford Centre, as well as access to Burnston, Davian and Clifton. At the best of times, this area is very busy and the rest of the time gridlocked. With the amount of material brought in using the road network in this area, I believe the figure quoted here this week was one HGB lorry every 18 minutes, as well as the taking away of all the waste products. This will add to congestion and increase the already high pollution from traffic. May I quickly comment about the chimney height reduction and the air pollution that this proposed plant will release into the atmosphere. With height restriction, the air dispersal of this pollution will obviously be greatly reduced. This must, in all logic, mean a higher concentration of toxins closer to the plant. With resident housing only 500 metres away, a re retail park adjacent to the site, and Trafford Stadium on the opposite side of the Master Ship Canal, as well as the sports and leisure facilities on the other side of the M60 motorway, this must put everyone in the area in danger of increased health issues. I now wish to address why the residents feel how, that how they do with regard to the Environment Agency. The distrust the residents have on, of the Environment Agency and the permit they have issued is not too surprising. I know firsthand when I first encountered one of their representatives. It was at a presentation in Trapper Park by Pale Energy with regard, with regard to Brett. Talking to the gentleman for quite a while, hearing him extol all the positives with regard to this plant and not one negative. Its enthusiasm for this incinerator gave me the impression that the agency had already made their mind up. This coupled with, as I believe, the agency having never received the permit for an incinerator, not forgetting, as has come out this week at the inquiry, no matter how often operators have breached their air quality responsibilities, they have never rescinded a permit. So I believe we have just cause to distrust the environment agency and our right to do so. <coughs> I would just wait, wish to make one, one other comment before I finish. On Wednesday morning, the 14th of November, while Mr. Kingston was cross-examining Alan Watson, he made it obvious that in his view, the local community and their concerns were irrelevant to the inquiry and should not be considered. I wish to point out that when all the boxes of files with their paragraphs and page numbers, not forgetting their appendices, were taken away, and all the talk is finished. Most, if not all, of the people sat at these tables will leave this area possibly never to return. Only to use this inquiry report to prove or disprove a point while at another inquiry. While the residents and businesses that live and work in this area will be left with the consequences of this decision. So we are not an irrelevance. We are an interested part we are interested parties who are of great importance with regard to this inquiry. We must also not forget that by allowing this application, this area will be locked into this plant, adding to its already high air pollution for at least the next 25 years. Retrospective insight or ignorance is no defense. Information on the pollution of this type of plant is in the public domain if it is looked for. Finally, may I also draw your attention to the fact that across all political persuasion, Traffic Council unanimously rejected this biomass planning application. The vast majority of the residents attending brief clean air group public meetings and rallies, as well as correspondents in the local press, have made their feelings known that this plan is not wanted. Appeal spokesman on television 
not so too long ago, stated that pill holdings have never lost an appeal. Make this the first. Oh, yeah. I that common sense prevails and that this inquiry listens to local democracy and the will of the residents and councils by re rejecting this application. I strongly believe that there is no requirement for this development and would hope that you would see fit to recommend to the Secretary of State to dismiss this proposal on the grounds stated above. Thank you. Stephen Joseph Madden of 20 Tuesday Avenue, Davie, speak on behalf of myself and the following individuals who cannot attend this public inquiry today. Mrs. Catherine Brickell of 5 Lonsdale Avenue, Davie, Mr. Roger Turner of 26 Plymouth Road, Sale, Mr. Stephen Bates of 41 Bexford Road, Davie, Mr. Gary Brickell of 5 Lonsdale Avenue, Davie, Miss Deanne Howarth of 20 Teasdale Avenue, Davie, Mrs. Linda Topping of 18 Canterbury Road debut. There's not many to go, don't worry. <laughs> um, Mr. Paul Topping of 18 Canterbury Road debut. Mr. Matthew Bates of 14 Clarendon Road, Flixton. Miss Joanne Rees of 26 Plymouth Road, Sale. Mrs. Barbara Bates of 41 Bex Close debut. And Mr. Paul Taylor of 24 Teasdale Avenue, debut. I am a resident of debut, a family man and a father of a 19-month-old son. I'm also a local business owner, employing 18 members of staff. I was born in Davie, grew up in Davie, and until I found out about BREP, had planned to raise my family and grow old in Davie. I am scared to death of this proposal. I'm scared for my health, the health of my family, my friends, and most fearful for the health of my 19-month-old son and the other children we plan to have. If true democracy and localism is ignored and BREP gains planning permission, then, like so many other local people with whom I have spoken, I will leave this area permanently with my family as I am not willing to take the risk with my family's health. I and so many other local people who share my fears and my intentions are living proof that the public perception of health risks exists and is significant. I and we are also living proof of the degenerative effect BREP will have on our area. I will now talk briefly about some of the things that fuel the material public perception of harm. Firstly, if you Google the words biomass incineration and health impacts, the vast majority of the links that come up mention questions and studies around the negative health impacts associated with biomass incinerators. I didn't come across one that said it's safe for human health. So, if a biomass incinerator, as tall as the chill factor, and as wide as parts of the Trafford Centre, is built in our residential area, where it is visible for so many people to see, do we honestly believe that local residents will not undertake their own research into the impacts on health? If they're anything like me or any of the residents I've spoken with, they will Google it. And what will they find? They will find pages and pages and pages of links, articles and studies that say these incinerators can be seriously dangerous to human health, whether proven or unproven. Another factor which fuels the public anxiety over BREP is the lack of faith in the pollution control regime. Many of the people I've spoken to, and there have been many, have said that they do not trust the regime tasked with controlling the air pollution levels in our area, namely the Environment Agency. The well-informed public know that the EA are supposed to carry out two random checks per year on incinerators such as BREP. The rationale behind such random checks is that 
If the plant operators do not know when the EA are going to turn up, then they need to keep harmful emission levels within agreed limits at all times. Otherwise, they run the constant risk of being found out and reprimanded and or having their permits removed. That said, I have found out, as have many other people I know, via an email I have seen directly from the EA, requested under the Freedom of Information Act, that the EA does not carry out random checks, but instead informs the plant operators in advance. I quote from the EA's email. We do not undertake stack emission monitoring testing totally unannounced. They go on to say, in order to make efficient and effective use of our resources, we will notify the plant operator several weeks in advance that we intend to carry out emission testing at their site. We do not disclose the exact date, but rather notify them of a potential visit period. This usually lasts for four weeks, during which time the EA will arrive at the site unannounced in order to carry out the required testing. So, based upon the EA's own words, the pollution control regime tasked with protecting the environment and our health tells the plant operator the exact four-week period within which their monitoring visit will take place. They therefore indirectly inform them of the remaining 48 weeks of the year when they will definitely not be receiving a monitoring test visit, leaving them free to increase emissions to whatever levels they like, subjecting the public to unacceptable risk. I asked the inspector, how can the public not have material concerns over the impacts of BREP on their health and their family's health given the fact the EA state they do random checks and then are forced to admit that they don't. Also, I found an article um, from April 2012 in the Private Eye publication which told of how an admissions tester for an incinerators had contacted them and said that, and I quote from the article, to fulfill the Environment Agency permit, PM 2.5 is not continuously measured and incinerator companies only have to send measurements from their stacks usually once a year. Private companies charge between £10,000 and £20,000 a year to carry out the tests, but if an incinerator fails, the companies have no duty to report this to the Environment Agency and another test is done later. The incinerator companies can decide when it is done and will do it months in advance to make sure they get the right results. Companies can even change the type of waste they burn and the temperature at which they do so for the test day. Also, in the same article, it says that the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs admits to having 62 monitoring stations across the UK for particulate matter 2.5, PM 2.5. None of them near an incinerator. Again, how can there be anything but a material public concern over health impacts given the above information which is in the public domain? Another reason that fuels the public anxiety is the air quality management area. The local public know that we already live in a highly polluted area. My own mother and my fiancé both suffer from asthma. Whenever we go on holiday, their asthma tends to improve quite noticeably. When we return home, they tell me they can feel their condition worsen almost immediately and have to revert back to more regular inhaler use. Many people know that we live in or next to an air quality management area and they know that this means that the air they breathe is more polluted than is safe to do so. The construction of such a massive biomass incinerator with its visible chimney and plume next to an air quality management area with all the accessible public information on risk to human health will clearly result in materially significant public anxiety over the risks to their health and well-being. The unprecedented level of public outcry against BREP that I have witnessed firsthand and that we have heard about in this public inquiry is incontestable proof of this fact. The fact that the pollution control regime, mainly the EA, 
it's already allowing us to be subjected to these illegal levels of toxic emissions, i.e. those breaching EU law since 2010, is yet another reason why the public have no faith in the regime. Furthermore, the fact that the EA has granted a permit to PrEP to operate in this existing AQMA will only add to already illegal high, which will, oh, sorry, which will only add to already illegally high levels of toxic emissions, further beggars belief and defies logic. Another reason for the um, material and public anxiety uh, consideration is the lack of any comparable plant. Um, and the low chimney height. Another fact, there is no, as far as I know, there is no comparable plant in terms of combination of size, technology, feedstock and chimney height operating within the emission levels that the, um, that the, the, P, the Peel Energy claims to be able to achieve. Claims that we also know are subject to much dispute. Despite requests under the Freedom of Information Act, the Environment Agency have been unable to provide any comparables at all. I understand that the, ch the fact that the chimney stack is a mere 44.23 metres high means that the pollutants will be more concentrated locally. It's ironic that this chimney height is approximately half the height of the appellant's otherwise similar plant at Inns Marshes, purely because it is on the flight path of Barton Airport, which Peel also owns. Surely it is clear to anyone with common sense and logic that this is not the right area to build such an incinerator. At a previous public meeting, a representative of the Environment Agency stated that the chimney stack for Brett should ideally be between 60 and 100 metres tall to more effectively disperse the pollutants and toxins. This is yet another reason why the public lacks trust in the pollution control regime. So, to conclude on the significant public perception of health risks, I put to the inspector that there is a clear, tangible and material public perception of risks to health from BREP. I'm sure Mr Kingston will try and argue that such perceptions are not material. Mr Kingston does not live in this area. He does not know the people of Ermston, of Flixton, of Davie and all the other areas close to BREP. We do. And we know that the perception of health risk is a real and massive local concern evidenced by the unprecedented levels of public outcry. It is worth mentioning that the perception of harm and the, ex and the anxiety it causes is a real health concern in itself. If the creation of, a pu of, if the creation of public anxiety and or the perception of health risk is a consideration in planning law, then the Inspector and moreover the Secretary of State must not allow Brett to be built. The first duty of any government is to safeguard its people, especially over and above a blue chip developer that seems to wish to provide cheap power to the many commercial buildings it owns and tenants therein. I move on briefly to talk of the degeneration effect Brett will undoubtedly have on the local area. I am sure this will contravene the Council's own regeneration policies, uh, plans and efforts. I moved back to this area to raise a family after a short stint of living away. If I had known about BREP then, I would not have moved back. As I have already stated, if BREP goes ahead, I am one of the fortunate ones to be able to move away. And move away I certainly will. I have also spoken with many other people who share my fears and my intentions some of whom have already put their houses on the market in anticipation that they may take time to sell in this current climate. So, given the unpre unprecedented public outcry against BREP, it is clear that it will make this beautiful family oriented area unattractive to live, work and spend leisure time in. It is a certainty that people will leave the area. It is also a certainty that people who otherwise would want to move to the area will be put off from doing so. One such example is that of one of the people I speak on behalf of today, Mr Roger Turner. Mr Turner and his partner were recently house hunting to move back to Ermston from sale before knowing about the Brett proposal. He had got to offer stage on a house off Davian Road. Then he heard about Brett 
and did some research into it. Because of this, he decided to cancel his search and is now looking for houses away from the area. I therefore put to the inspector that this incinerator will have a devastating effect on the local economy and on the lives of the people living in it. It is already having the effect of forcing many people to consider leaving their homes in pursuit of peace of mind in other areas. I therefore urge the inspector and the Secretary of State to reject the appeal and not to grant planning permission for BREP. Thank you very much for your time, Mr Inspector, and I invite any questions. Thank you very much. to the inquiry on behalf of this group. IDEA was launched in May 2006 at Christ Church on Lostock Road in East Daily Hume as an event chaired by Stephen Lowe, Bishop of Hume, and Beverly Hughes, MD for Stratford. IDEA is a community group and in our six years of existence we have worked closely with representatives of Trafford Borough Council, the Energy Saving Trust, local schools and nurseries, businesses, the church and the community. That, that, can I just say, um, you've hopefully given me a copy. I think you have submitted it before, haven't you? Yes. So, so it, should be, it should be available to you, uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Jokely. Um, but um, again, if, if uh, a copy could be given at the back of the hall. I do have some more copies. All right, okay. I, will, I will leave them. Uh, All yeah. right, yeah. But it wasn't <coughs> in advance, yeah. 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 Okay, sorry. Our aims are to promote for the benefit of the public the conservation, protection and improvement of the physical and natural environment, to advance the education of the public in these same areas, to advance the education of the public in all areas relating to health and well-being, and to further our involvement with stakeholders. Examples of major projects we've undertaken include a daily energy saving project, where we've worked with the Energy Saving Trust and Trafford to promote energy saving measures in homes. And this was taken up by 330 residents, leading to annual carbon dioxide savings of 217 tonnes. We've been involved with a community hall project to induce, introduce energy saving measures, which was financially supported by the early environmental trust. We're working on a garden project with local children's nursery. We've carried out love, food, hate, waste cookery classes for young mothers. We've achieved equal congregation status at our church over two, three year periods. And we've run various events to raise awareness. In a society which is ever more wasteful, IDEA is committed to reducing energy usage, reducing waste and recycling wherever possible. As such, the first view from the, within the IDEA team was that the proposed incinerator at Barden had a number of aspects which fitted with the aims of the group. We are well aware of the need for renewable and low carbon energy to meet the electricity needs of the future. So we might have some sympathy with this proposed incinerator if we considered the best available technology was incorporated within the designs, efficient and regular monitoring systems for the emissions were employed, and due consideration has been given to the other factors impacting on the local environment. However, as residents in this area are well aware, 
The quality of the air we breathe every minute of every day is a major issue. Over many years, we have become accustomed to the distinctive odours coming on many occasions from one of the largest sewage or waste water treatment works in Europe. We have seen the M6 motorway, which most of us live within 500 metres of, developed to be a major external ring road for Manchester, and which daily grinds to a halt in the rush hour due to the high density of traffic flow or traffic standstill. We've seen retail, leisure and sports facilities developed by the motorway and the ship canal, which have all led to higher traffic levels at all hours, seven days a week. The motorway and areas alongside it now constitute an air quality management zone. We are already at risk from air pollution in East Asia. We believe that there are a number of major shortcomings and issues associated with the proposals for the Barton Biomass Incinerator, which lead us to oppose its approval. And here we have the issue of the height of the stack, Mr. Richards, which you <coughs> bear with me. We consider the proposals to operate the incinerator with a stack, the incinerator with a stack level of 45 metres is a significant departure from best practice in the industry in the UK and the other similar incinerators operated by Peel Energy, where stacks approximately double this height are employed. The stack height, as both Peel Energy and the Environment Agency have demonstrated, is a major factor included in dispersion, dispersion modelling, and the higher the stack, the, de the better the dispersion of the off gases, the emissions. Whatever calculations are presented to justify the design of a 45 metre stack, it seems to us that there is no significant difference to the siting of this incinerator compared to other biomass incinerators to justify a shorter stack. This design must be considered accept unacceptable. And we disagree with the Environment Agency statement, which they make in the, on page 107 in their determination document, and consider it a bending of the guidance rules to state that given the constraints imposed by other statutory, statutory regimes, we accept the height of the stack is best available technology. We have studied the, depart, the determination of an application for an environmental permit document issued by the Environment Agency relating to this incinerator. This includes a lengthy and very thorough response to all questions raised by a broad range of people objecting to the incinerator. What stands out time and again in the comments by the Environment Agency is that the emission levels are continually referenced against background levels. So, for example, if we consider nitrogen dioxide, we read on page 150 an Environment Agency comment. They say, the key judgment is whether the proposed insulation would have anything beyond a negligible impact. They go on to say, even assuming background levels are already exceeding the European Union environment quality standard for the nitrogen dioxide, the process contribution is negligible. When looking at the air quality management area as a whole, there will be no measurable effect. How can this be, we ask? If the operators run close to the daily average nitrogen dioxide maximum limit of 125 milligrams per cubic meter. And we note here that this is not an absolute limit, but a daily average limit. Emissions can acceptably go above 125 milligrams per cubic meter for periods of a time. What contributes to making the impact negligible, of course, is if the background levels are already high. IDEA would point out that high background levels of pollution are the case in this area, where we have an air quality management area alongside the M60. So putting it simply, the more polluted the area becomes, the easier it is to state that further pollution is insignificant. For the same reasons, the members of IDEA have also have major concerns over the increase in traffic arising from vehicles driving to and from the incinerator. The Environment Agency states that these are relevant considerations for the granting of a planning permission, but do not form part of the environmental permit decision-making process, except where there are established high background concentrations contributing to poor air, air, air quality, 
and the increased level of traffic might be significant in these limited circumstances. Again, we consider that this is exactly the case here, where the, air, where the motorway area is an air quality management zone. Why the Environment Agency chose not to consider this is, in our view, a serious shortcoming in their assessment of the project, especially when they state elsewhere. We also note the poor air quality in urban areas is predominantly due to traffic. <coughs> Since the Trafford Centre was built in 1998, 14 years ago, we have been subject, subjected to extensions of the Trafford Centre and many other new developments on an almost annual basis. Each time we read in the planning application words along these lines, the increase in traffic will be of the order of 1 or 2% and is considered minimal or insignificant. I will point out for those who take the trouble to calculate the result of compounding an annual 2% increase over 15 years, we discover an overall increase of 37%. Would anybody dare to declare this insignificant? No, and we have to live with it every day, that is 24-7 in the latest terminology. Traffic is already unacceptable in this residential area, and the M60 is the third busiest motorway in the country. The pollution from this alone is ruining the health and leading to the early death of residents in this community. This cannot be allowed to continue, and as an organisation with concerns over the health and well-being of people in this area, we think enough is enough. Those of us who have lived in this area for many years can recall when those living alongside the ship canal were known to have a greater risk of bronchitis. We also remember the regular smogs which occurred every year in the Trafford Park and local area. Thankfully, those days have passed. The ship canal has been cleaned up and the Clean Air Act from 1956 through to 1993 represented and brought into force major improvements in air quality. What we now see, Mr. Chairman, however, with the many incremental developments in the daily Hume area over the past 15 years, and plans for development such as this incinerator, make us fearful that we are stepping backwards rapidly, and that our grandchildren living here will be no better off in terms of the air they breathe than those who lived here 50 years ago. We were pleased to see the planning application for this incinerator turned down by Trafford Council and we strongly submit that this appeal should be, appeal should be rejected. Mr. Peel's group, maybe with council, is that all right? Sorry? Could, could I involve them on some of the questions? Or not? No, it's an opportunity for you to make a statement. It's an opportunity for a question. So, um, any questions? <coughs> well, that's fair. 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 Hello. I think I'm, just, I'm just checking. Uh, you've heard from my brother earlier, but we share the same surname, so I was just checking on your list. It wasn't, hadn't been lost in the. Sorry. Which is your brother? My name is Arias. He spoke first. He had to leave earlier. It's just I, I also put okay, myself down. You did. Speak. So you I'm, did. I'm, I'm, you're I'm right. Mi you're I'm Miguel, right. though. First name Miguel. He's quiet. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Could, will you speak next? Is that all right? Sure. I'm sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, well, thanks for pointing out. Okay. Um, can you give a copy to. Uh, yeah, I'll call us one of the Oh, yeah. that was, that was oh, sorry. Sorry, I heard you then. No, I was not Can you give them one? Nah, 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 and Mr. Fraser and the DAC So everybody's got one. Sorry, I Sorry, sorry. It's just that this is supplied by Mr. Peel's house and Mr. Gover here, please. Right, it is supplied by Mr. Peel's house. So you can get them off this restaurant. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sometimes uh, Paul Pickford, I live in Flixton, I'm an asthma sufferer and I'm concerned like everybody else about the children and grandchildren and general health conditions. And uh, can I say that all I found out is available on Mr. Peel's website, maybe not under the glossy parts, it might be under legislations and policies, but near enough everything I found out it is, is on his website. So first, climate change. All the agencies are promoting, as Mr. Peel knows, because he's got it all on his website, DEFRA, uh, Environment Agency, and a very big list of others, even the government promoting it. But what they've not done, I try to find out is, I phone the Environment Agency to try and find out what, there must be some legislation that these biomass plants would be built in a place where it had minimum impact on health and the environment. I mean, I'm, I'm for, you've got to have renewable energy looking at it. So, but you would not put it where it can harm people's health and the environment. What's already contaminated in this area, by the way. Anyway, the other question is what I was going to put to Mr. Peel's group was, I look at Mr. Peel, he's a very clever man. He looks ahead. Would, would you agree on that? Well, no, no, sorry, not allowed. Anyway, anyway, this is my, this is, this, this is my, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyway, looking at, he's very clever and he's got, he, 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 he analyzes it. Sure we So you say to yourself, why Barton? There's something Genuine. special about Barton. He knows he's got a problem with the chimney because it'll affect his development at the airport. So there's something very, there's a slight smell about it. <laughs> but he's proposing burning wood. But what is on site right next door where there'd be no transport costs and uh, there's other water what's being wasted, I think, hot water from what I gather. So wouldn't it be better to approach, whether he has done or he hasn't, United Utilities and ask them, is there any chance of burning your sewage, which is in abundance, which can last longer than the wood supply, because the wood supply, looking at your biomass plants, looking on the map, there's more and more coming online. I know Mr. Peel owns utility companies. He supplies it to Media City, to the traffic centre, it's got their own water borehole, it supplies everything, it ties everything in. So it would make sense if he's thinking ahead to, to take over burning of the sewage, which is on tap right next door. So I know it get back to the chimney, but I think that's where we've got it because that chimney, according to the environment agency, should be 60 to 100 metres high. So how he's got away with it, I don't know. And anyway, there's, there's another bit, and all on his website, you, you can drive yourself nuts with it. It's phase two and three of the power station, so I don't know what that is. Anyway, you've got to look at the other overall picture. These, these are just some of the developments, what he's done now, which are on the map, which I was hoping that Mr. Peel could have supplied more information, but all it is at the moment is, He's got 35 million visitors to the Trafford Centre. He's got the Leisure Village with the Chill Factor, David Lloyd's, Legoland, Trafford Golf Centre, four hotels. And it, now the latest one's just come online, is Event City, which he, he puts on his thing that he's attracted 35,000. So the next thing what's coming, what's not on the air yet, is the fish world, whatever it is, whatever, uh, aquarium. aquarium world, yeah, so that's more traffic and more, and if uh, you look at the maps, what, what is Mr. Peel, and work out where everything is, and Mr. Peel's group know these other developments which are coming online, that this is going to cause major pollution and major traffic jams which there already is some now at certain times. I mean, to be honest, when you took the last uh, inquiry uh, lady to the site, it was two o'clock when the traffic's minimum. If you go between four now, up to say half past six or more, it's a gridlock 
and the motorway is standing still. So all these things need to be looked at. He's got loads of other developments on the way, like Salford City, but well, he's done Salford City Stadium. Now he's got Port Salford, which is more pollution on the Liverpool Road. I know he's building a new bridge across the canal, but this will not relieve. If you study the bridge from where the roundabouts are, it will just pile the traffic up more near the traffic centre. But at the end of the day, from what I can see, he's put more on his development than the consideration of people's lives. I mean, maybe some of these new developments are going to be asthma clinics, cancer clinics, <laughs> or even the only way to get fresh air is a can of peeled fresh air <laughs> to take home with you from the traffic centre. So it's not, to me, when you look at the map, he's putting too many eggs in one basket. He's ramming everything in and keep developing and developing and creating a major problem with air pollution. He's not really, he's looked ahead what he can what he can do. I mean, he's got peel advertising. Everything's peel. I bet even the toilet paper is a bit peel. But he's really gone to town. And to be honest, you've got to consider the people. He can overdevelop the area. And that way, people go, oh, I'm not going to traffic centre because you get stuck in the traffic. And what's this new biomass plant they've built? I don't want to be in the football dome with my kids playing football, breathing air pollution from there. So, in the end, it's, it's, it's going to come about that he's, he'll drop the right finger instead of considering the people and, and planning it proper, not just keep ramming stuff in. I don't know, I think I've gone off gabbing it up now, so I think that'll be good. And everyone's done a grand job and gone into it in detail, but I'm a bit thick here. So I, I don't go into detail, I've just been long, but I must thank Mr. Peel for putting everything on his website, because he's very good. <laughs> anyone, anyone, don't look at the gloss, because he's got pictures there of one car at the traffic centre, or one car at the traffic light. Not this is Photoshop, but go beyond the gloss and you can click on his little bits at the bottom, strategies and policies, and then you get down to the nitty gritty. Oh, there's one other thing I forgot. Why ask why I think he's after burning suit? Because you've got three furnaces he's picked out, but there's only one what can burn sewage. So he's looking ahead. Uh, what he, what if, if wood runs out, he can burn sewage. And not only that, I don't, I'm not found out where it is yet, but he's got peel waste management on the banks of the ship canal. And you might be able to tell me where it is. So will the wood and everything be coming from peel themselves? I know you're not allowed to tell me how you <laughs> But I think it, it does need, and as the government don't look at it proper, I, I would propose, I don't know if everyone with me, that the next biomass plants, one should be built in Westminster if they pass it, <laughs> and then the other one should be next to Mr. Peel's house hey! on, on the Iron Man. <laughs> I thank you all for that. Thank you.